I'd like to wish Smokey Bear a happy birthday message. Happy birthday. We're so excited for Smokey Bear's 80th birthday. That's right. Our friend has been helping us learn about wildfire prevention since 1944. To celebrate, we'd like to welcome you to Smokey Bear Live 4. In this four-part video series, we're investigating real wildfire case studies. Today, we have two experts from the USDA Forest Service here to help us learn how campfires can spark wildfires, Jason Barnes and Rex Thompson. We're so excited to share their expertise with you. And they're joined today with our hosts, Genesis Robinson and Robert Westover. Hi, everyone. My name is Genesis. No, 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 wrong answer. Everything we're talking about today is classified. We'll be revealing some very real case studies. And for your protection, Agent Genesis, everything must remain confidential. But the narrator and you already introduced us. Hmm, all right. <clears throat> and all the information we're talking about is available online. <laughs> I know everything is on the line, okay? You don't need to tell me that. No, no, no. Online, as in the internet? Mm, oh, I see. Uh, so it's already all been compromised. I guess that leaves me with one choice. The pen. Wrong pen? <clears throat> yeah, I think the mine pipe one is uh, actually blue. Anyway, my name is Genesis Robinson. Fine. Hi, my name is Robert Westover and I'm a public affairs specialist with the USDA Forest Service. But just don't tell anyone that. Gotcha. Wildfires that are unplanned and unwanted are considered natural hazards that cause a lot of damage each year. But the good news is that we can do many things to prevent that. True. Nine out of every 10 wildfires are caused by people like us. I call them stupid fires. So we can all do our part to prevent them from happening. Exactly. Like campfires, for example. Let's be honest, setting up a campfire is one of the most fun parts about camping. Cooking your food, warming your hands, and making tasty s'mores. But campfires can easily get out of control and become wildfires. This can cause serious damage to land, properties, and buildings, and can even result in fatalities. So it's just important for folks to understand and to make sure that they're aware of the importance of, of putting out their campfires. The reason why you, you don't want to walk away from it, you don't have any type of control. For example, let's take the Wallow Fire. In 2011, the Wallow Fire burned over 500,000 acres in parts of Arizona and New Mexico. It was caused, as you probably might guess, by a campfire. Two men were camping in the Bear Wallow Wilderness near Alpine, Arizona. They made a campfire, and although they didn't clear away any brush, they did let the fire burn out before they left it. Or so they thought. Hmm. They walked away, they went down to the Black River to fish. When they were coming back, they started smelling smoke. They were overcome by the fire four times, and they had to run and escape, and went into the, the river to prevent them from being overcome by the fire and the smoke. So they almost died from this fire too. Sparks had ignited the surrounding vegetation and it soon became an uncontrollable wildfire that burned for 40 days. The fire was driven by high winds. This helped spread the fire and made it more difficult for firefighters to stop. Because if the winds are too high, then we can't fly those helicopters or even those fixed wings aircraft to even put down water or retardant. We just had to back out to roads and then till the, the wind subsided pretty much. In that time, the blaze did a lot of damage. A total of 72 structures were destroyed, including four commercial buildings, 36 outbuildings, and 32 homes. It is now the largest wildfire in the state of Arizona. One outbuilding and five homes were also damaged. The total cost of damage was estimated to be $109 million. More importantly, 16 people were injured, but thankfully there weren't any casualties. Yet many people were still impacted. In fact, over 10,000 residents had to evacuate their homes for about three weeks. But there were other side effects as well. In this satellite image from our friends at NASA, you can see the amount of smoke that came from that much burning. This impacted air quality from the American Southwest all the way to East Central North America. But the land itself will take decades to recover from this damage. 
it's going to take many generations. I won't see it in my time, but maybe the audience that I'm speaking to probably might see it different than what I saw it in 2011. The men who started the fire had to spend a weekend in jail, and they had to pay for the damage that they caused. That's because if you start a wildfire, you're responsible for paying for anything that was damaged. If that includes public property, the local, state, or federal government can charge you, which means you'd be in a criminal case. If the damages include personal property, the owners of that property could sue, which means you'd be in a civil case. Depending on the damage that it did, you know, there could be civil cases as well from you know, burning down people's homes and that kind of thing. If a house gets burned down, you're subject to insurance going after you on that, civil suits, even with smoke damage. And you're responsible for paying for the cost to put out that fire. So you're paying for all the helicopters, all the manpower. Which can go into millions and millions of dollars, depending on the size and the amount of resources that respond to it. And there could be criminal charges as well. In the case of the Wallow Fire, the men who started it have to pay $3.7 million in damages and suppression costs. It's unlikely they'll ever live long enough to pay that full amount. So essentially, each of them will have to pay $500 a month for the rest of their lives. Yikes, I wouldn't want to be them. And you don't have to be. There are many things we can do to control our campfires. In fact, most of them happen before you even build one. First off, don't make one at all if you're not allowed to at the campgrounds, area, event, or wherever you're camping. Some places prohibit them for safety and they'll post warnings on signs or on their websites. So try to find out the rules before you even get there. Know before you go. Second, even if you're allowed to make a campfire, don't do it in hazardous weather conditions such as high winds or dry conditions. If the campgrounds already have an existing fire ring, use it instead of creating a new one. The folks who made the campgrounds will have put it in an already safe location. If you have to make a new fire pit, make sure that it's at least 15 feet away from tents, shrubs, flammable objects. Also be aware of low hanging branches. When you pick a spot, make sure that it's clear, level, and not windy. Clear out 10 feet of grass, twigs, leaves, pine needles, firewood, and other debris or brush around the campfire spot. That's very important. Remember that this is the first thing the campers of the wall of fire got wrong. True. When you're done clearing debris, dig out a one-foot pit for the campfire to help keep it contained. Now you're almost ready to light that campfire, but one more thing to do is to remove any rocks from the area. Now you might think, that can't be right. Lots of campers like to use a ring of rocks around their fire to keep it contained. That should help prevent wildfires, right? That's true, but the reality is that fire can actually make rocks explode. <laughs> Crazy, right? The theory is that some rocks have moisture trapped inside of them. The heat of the fire causes the water to evaporate and burst out of the rock. So for your safety, it's best to use some kind of metal ring instead of rocks to contain your campfire. Now that you've got that beautiful fire pit ready, feel free to light up your campfire. But just don't leave it unattended. Remember, that was the second thing the Wallow Fire campers got wrong. Always make sure your campfire is completely out before leaving it. It's really easy to look at a fire that's almost out and think, ah, it will burn out on its own. But really, that's usually when the embers are at their hottest. And it's not too difficult for a wind gust to snatch one and set the land on fire. To be fair to the two men who started the wall of fire, they did think that they had waited long enough for that campfire to go out. They even did something we call the paper test. Basically, they put a little piece of paper on their campfire. And since it didn't burn, that means it was out. And it wasn't. The paper test isn't very effective because it isn't able to check the entire surface of a campfire. However, there's a real easy method to follow to make sure that fire is out cold. Ready? Pour, stir, pour. That's it. First, you drown your fire in water. Then you stir it with a shovel until the embers are out. Then it needs to cool down, so drown it in water again. After that, Ask an adult to check the heat of the fire with the back of their hand, because it's more sensitive to heat than the front of their hand. It should be nice and cool. Remember, if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. So if it's still hot, keep pouring water and stirring until it's cold. The pour, stir, pour method will help put out campfires completely so that they won't spark wildfires. 
And anything that does spark a wildfire gets studied by wildland fire investigators. How cool is that? Wildland fire investigators are like detectives. They search for wildfire clues to determine what started fires and who started them. If you're interested in becoming a wildland fire investigator, check out the National Wildfire Coordinating Group's website for more information. Oh no, Agent Genesis, that information is classified. Okay, glad I got the pin, the right one here. All right, look. Oh, I have the safety on. <clears throat> Mm. Wait a minute. Who? Who? Who am I? Uh, Agent Genesis. What? What are we doing next week? Well, Robert, uh, in one week we'll discover how vehicles can spark wildfires. In two weeks we'll find out how fireworks can spark wildfires. And in three weeks, join us for a live question and answer program where our experts will answer your questions live. Leave a question in the comments section of this video and we'll try to answer it during the stream. If you think of a question later, you can also write it in the comments section of the stream while we're live. All of our videos and streams will be available on the Natural Inquirer YouTube channel. Smokey Bear Live is brought to you by a partnership with the Natural Inquirer and the USDA Forest Service. The Forest Service manages about 193 million acres of national forests and grasslands throughout the United States. They also work in partnership with tribal and state governments and private landowners to benefit another 600 million acres, not to mention their work internationally. Phew. Meanwhile, the Natural Inquirer is a program that takes scientific research papers and rewrites them in easy to understand language for students at many different grade levels. All of their materials are free to order or download on their website. In fact, they even have a publication called A Burning Question, which explores the effectiveness of Smokey Bear on wildfire prevention. And this is just one of their publications about wildfires. So after you finish this video, you might as well keep exploring these other amazing resources. In the meantime, happy birthday, Smokey Bear. And remember, only, only you can prevent, prevent wildfires. wildfires.